Okay. <laughs> Hello, dear friends. Good afternoon. Such a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Let me move it a little bit. Now we can see. So this story is Perseus and Medusa. It's Medusa. It's a quite a fascinating character, Medusa. Mm. Perseus and Medusa. <clears throat> Let's start. Perseus was the son of Zeus, the ruler of the gods. So Zeus was uh, the ruler of the gods. When Perseus became a young man, he set out on a quest. He had a mission, so he went for a quest. He wanted to prove himself worthy of his father by winning fame and glory. Yeah, I think uh, all the children's, well, I will not put too much uh, <coughs> of my thoughts. Perseus came to the land of Seriphus, 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 Seriphus. He found the whole country blasted and barren. Oh, nothing grew in the fields. The trees of the forests were blackened stumps. The people huddled in caves, afraid to come out. The only buildings that Perseus could see were burnt out ruins. Oh my. What has happened to your land? He asked the king. My country is cursed by a monster, the king explained. Her name is Medusa. Once she was a maiden who boasted of her beauty. The gods overheard her bragging and sent her a terrible punishment. They turned her trees, tre tresses. They turned her tresses into a nest of writhing, writhing snakes, writhing snakes. Beautiful Medusa became a frightening org. Auger. Oh, Medusa became a frightening auger. <clears throat> One glimpse of her is enough to turn a person to stone. Look around. You can see what she has done to my country. Have a pity. Have pity on us, Perseus. Read us off this monster. <gasps> okay, so here is uh, the apricot gem. Let me put uh, on a better light. You can see it. <gasps> Looks so good. Wow. Look at it. And it is so good because um, it's kind of caramelized, uh, a little bit uh, caramelized. And uh, if you take longer time to to um, to cook it, there is uh, a much intense and developed flavor. I like it. <laughs> uh, it's different from just. Uh, if you see the recipe from the package, you can see some of the recipe. You boil water and put uh, the fruit in. No, 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 it's not the same. This one is a little bit caramel, caramelized. Oh, so good, so good. Uh, this is the lemon curd. Okay, I need uh, a cup of tea. And, uh, To keep on. 
Perseus promised to do his best or die in the attempt. How was he to find Medusa? How was he to kill her when he could not even look at her? Perseus offered a sacrifice to the gods. He prayed that they would send him an answer. The gods heard his prayer. Asina and Hermes came down from Mount Olympus to help him. I will lend you my winged sandals, said Hermes. They will carry you through the air to Medusa's cave. And I will lend you my shield, Asina added. See how brightly it shines. Use it as a mirror when you fight Medusa. Do not look at her or you will turn to stone. Watch her reflection in the shields. It will show you where to strike with your sword. Aha, uh -huh. that is a smart, a good mirror. Hmm. Perseus thanked Asina and Hermes for their kindness. He tied Hermes' sandals around his ankles winged sandals. He buckled Asina's shield over his left arm, buckled it up with a, a duct tape. Yeah, this is duct tape, black color. Yeah, he put a, a duct tape. You see, there was one story I just saw on the internet. There was one guy and uh, he took on plane and uh, he was not kind. He, he did something wrong, I think. He maybe touched the, the um, flight attendants. Or the, anyway, and uh, people criticized and tried to calm him down. And he said, my parents has $2 million and I am a... Uh, and uh, I, 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 you, you, you are nothing. I am the best. And then the um, flight attendant, the other flight attendant, came up and uh, knocked him down, uh, um, conquered him. How do we say conquered him? And put him on his, uh, on his seat and uh, taped him with duct tape so he could not move. It was quite a, a comedy. Anyway, uh, Hermes was not the same situation. He didn't say anything wrong. He didn't say he, his parents has $2 million or $3 million. He just, uh, he just need the shield. Okay. Perseus thanked, thanked uh, Asina and Hermes for their kindness. He tied and uh, he tried on the, the shoes and tied the shield. Mm -hmm. Taking his sword in his right hand, he cried, Carry me to Medusa. Ooh, he was flying, must be. The wings on the sandal fluttered. They carried Perseus high into the sky and across the land of Seriphus. Perseus saw a range of mountains below. Smoke below, smoke billowed from a cave. Perseus flew down to see what was inside. He passed over heaps of statues. Oh, a lot of statues. Mm. Can you believe what it is? Can you guess? I guess they were fighting Medusa and Medusa gave them a glance and they turned into stone. So those are the statues. Suddenly he realized what they were. These were the bodies of people who had come to fight Medusa. She had turned them all to stone. 
Perseus adjusted his shield so that he could see the mouth of the cave in the shield's mirror-like surface. Oh, he did not see, because if he see, he will turn into a stone. He will not allow himself to see anything of Medusa's eyes. Even when Medusa died, his glance, her glance, will turn anything into stone, so any person into stone. So he used the shield, the mirror, to, to look. Okay. <clears throat> With his eyes fixed on the shield, he cried, Medusa, it is I, Perseus, son of Zeus. I challenge you to fight. A rattling hiss filled the air as the monster emerged. <gasps> from her cave. <gasps> oh my. Her hair was a wrist, a wrist, a wrist, twinning twist. Here was a twisting, was a twisting, twinning mass of snakes. Green scales covered her body from head to feet. Green scales. Poison dripped from her flung, her fangs. Oh, as she ganashed. Her teeth, shh, she bared her claws, shh. Perseus, son of Zeus, she hissed. Is that your name? I cannot remember the names of all who come to challenge me, but I remember their faces. I can see them now, as if they were carved. In stone, Medusa laughed, long and hard. Smoke poured from her nostrils. She spit jets of flame at Perseus. His winged sandals carried him out of the way. Oh, that's lucky. Why don't you look at me, Perseus, Medusa said. Are you afraid of being overcome by my beauty? Overcome, yes. By your beauty, no. Perseus replied, Take a look at yourself, but be careful. The sight of your own face might turn you to a stone. Perseus turned his shield so that Medusa could see her own reflection. The monster shrieked, shrieked, shrieked. The writhing, the writhing snake spit poison. How dare you laugh at me? Medusa shouted. I was beautiful once. I will be beautiful again. You won't have the chance. You will not have the chance. Perseus fixed his eyes on Medusa's face, mirrored in the shining shield. Whoosh! That was... I saw Perseus fixed his eyes on Medusa's face in the mirror, luckily. He gripped his sword, and stuck. Medusa's head flew from her shoulders. Her cursed, her curses died on her lips. Her eyes, filled with hate, stayed open, glared at Perseus. One by one, the snakes of her hair lay still. Even in death, 
Medusa's terrible face still had the power to turn people to stone. Perseus took care not to look at it. He turned his eyes away as he picked up the head and placed it inside a leather sack. Ooh, he didn't look. That is good. Then he flew on far out over the ocean to the shores of the great sea. A large rock rose from the waves. Suddenly, Perseus heard someone screaming for help. He flew down to see what was what it was. He found a beautiful maiden chained to the rock. Who are you? Perseus asked. What brought you here? My name is Andromeda. Andromeda. My name's Andromeda, the maiden told him. My father's name is Cepheus. Cepheus. He is the king of this country. My mother is Cassiopeia. 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 She angered the gods by boasting of her beauty. Oh, Cassiopeia. They sent a dragon to destroy the cities of our coast. The monster has devoured whole towns. Hundreds of people have lost their lives. My parents asked the gods to forgive them. They begged them to save us from the dragon. What answer did the gods give? Perseus asked. They told my father to sacrifice his daughter to the dragon. Andromeda said, My parents did not want to do it, but they had no choice. My people were suffering. They bought me, they brought me to this rock. Now I wait for the dragon to come. Do not fear, said Perseo. Perseus, I will save you. When will the dragon arrive? He is here now. Andromeda screamed. Perseus turned in time to see a huge head rising from the sea. Banacos grew on its scales. Banacos grew on its scales. Seaweed dripped from its drawers. This is uh, the pure apricot gem. It's like uh, amber gold. Mm, so good. Wow. And um, apricot, lemon, and uh, very pure without, uh, without much others. Apricot, lemon, sugar, sea salt, and that's it. A pack tea. Oh, look at it. Wow. The dragon longed at Perseus, but Perseus' winged sandals carried him high in the air to safety. Perseus reached for Medusa's head in the leather bag. Oh, he's smart. Yeah. I cannot let this creature hurt Andromeda, he thought. I can easily turn it to stone by showing it Medusa's head. Oh, but if I do, the victory 
will never really be mine. I must defeat this dragon myself, relying only on my courage. Oh, the ego is taking its place. Oh, I'm too early to make any comments. Anyway, Perseus drew his sword. He flew down to he flew down to attack the dragon. Again and again, he stepped at the creature. He felt like a bee trying to fight an elephant. The dragon breathed air, breathed fire at Perseus. Perseus covered himself with Asina's shield just in time. The fight continued for hours. Andromeda begged Perseus to flee. Go away, don't fight, you will die. She told him that the dragon was too strong. No one could help her, but Perseus refused to run away. If I cannot save you, we will die together, he vowed. Romeo and Juliet. Where is Romeo and Juliet? Perseus felt himself growing tired. The dragon's scale were like bronze armor. There seemed no way for his sword to penetrate them. Suddenly, he noticed a spot beneath the dragon's neck where his scale did not quite grow together. Oh. oh. The opening was no wider than a fingertip. Would it be enough? Perseus flew beneath the dragon's jaw. The dragon's fiery breeze scorched his face, nearly blinded him. Yet Perseus did not turn away. He thrust at the bare spot with all his strength. The sword plunged deep into the dragon's throat. A fountain of blood poured from the wound. With a great moor, the dragon slipped beneath the waves, never to rise again. <laughs> Perseus broke Andromeda's chain. He lifted her in his arm and flew with her and flew with her through the air all the way to her father's palace. Sepphorus and Cassiopeia wept with joy to see their daughter again. How can we be how can we reward you? they said to Perseus. All the treasures of our kingdom are yours. I don't think he wants anything. He wants something or one thing only. Yes, I only want one treasure. Perseus told them, let me take Andromeda for my bride. Andromeda and Perseus were married. Everyone in the kingdom came to the palace to celebrate their wedding. When the festivity were at their height, the door burst open. A band of young men armed with sword and sp spears forced their way into the hall. Who are you? Perseus asked. If you have come to join our feast, you are welcome. If you have come to cause trouble, I warn you. My sword is at my side. 
I am prepared to defeat, to defend my bride. Perseus, Andromeda. Wow. My name is Phineas, the leader said. Andromeda is not your bride. Her father promised her to me before she was taken to the rock. And did you try to rescue her when she was on that rock? Did you do that? I did, okay? Perseus asked. No, you forgot about her, didn't you? You can forget, you can forget about her now. Andromeda is my bride. I will not give her up. Then I will take her. Phineas drew his sword and rushed at Perseus. His friends joined him, joined in, slashing at Perseus from all sides. Run, Perseus, or they will kill you. Andromeda screamed, I will not run from these cowards, nor will I stain my sword with their blood, said Perseus. I will use the power of one enemy to defeat another. Oh, how powerful. Use the power of one enemy to defeat another. All my friends, cover your eyes. As he said this, he pulled Medusa's head from the leather bag and held it up in the face, in the faces of Phineas and his followers. They instantly turned to stone. The wedding feast went on all night. The next morning, Perseus and his bride moved into a new palace. It was built on a hill top with a splendid view and wonderful terraced gardens filled with trees and flowers as well as some unusual statues. Oh my goodness, use the power of one enemy to defeat another. This is a the best quote for today. Thank you very, very much. I love you. I really do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Bye-bye, friends. Okay. Hello, dear friends. I will take this opportunity to introduce you my Yiqi shop. And uh, here are the products I sell on Yiqi. Art supply, lemon curds, original painting, brushes, and uh, ceramics, and uh, uh, cooking, and <laughs> tea, and all these things. If you want to help me to support, I really appreciate. Yeah, thank you.